even when they're axed in spectacularly gory fashion, a fallen star of The Walking Dead gets to walk away with a major feather in their cap for being on one of TV's most popular programs. Here's a look at what's happened to these killed-off Walking Dead actors since they departed the show. Love him or hate him, John Bernthal's Shane Walsh was a very big deal in The Walking Dead's earliest seasons. Shortly after his departure from the show, Bernthal starred in Martin Scorsese's The Wolf of Wall Street as Quaalude supplier Brad Bodnick. He also landed the leading role in Mob City from original Walking Dead showrunner Frank Darabont and continued to impress in cinematic action fare like Fury and Baby Driver. Apart from his Walking Dead role, though, Bernthal is perhaps best known for his turn as Frank Castle in Marvel's The Punisher for Netflix. Sarah Wayne Kelly's Lori Grimes was another divisive but paramount part of The Walking Dead's initial run. Though she was initially hesitant to take on another TV role after The Walking Dead, she landed a leading role in USA Network's alien invasion series Colony, which lasted for three seasons. Soon after, she also reprised her most noteworthy pre-dead role in Fox's Prison Break revival. While most of The Walking Dead's death-bound cast members get a call from the showrunners to let them know their characters are being killed off, it was Jeffrey DeMunn who did the dialing about Dale's fate. The actor had a long working relationship with Frank Darabont and said he was furious about how Darabont had been pushed out of the show after its inaugural season, so he quit. It didn't take long for DeMunn to reconnect with Darabont. DeMunn starred as police chief Hal Morrison in Darabont's short-lived noir series Mob City. He's branched out into other TV projects since then as well. After enjoying guest roles on several popular series, DeMunn became a regular on Showtime's Billions as the central character's father, Chuck Rhodes Sr. Lori Holden was also one of The Walking Dead's initial cast members who had a prior working relationship with Darabont on The Mist. But the death of Andrea wasn't as instantaneous as Dale's. In fact, she became an important factor in Season 3's War with the Governor, until she faced an especially gnarly demise at the hands of his reawakened henchmen. Since her Walking Dead departure, Holden enjoyed a recurring role on FX's The Americans as Renee, the new wife of the series' central FBI agent who, spoilers, may or may not have actually been a Russian spy. She also has a recurring role on Fox's legal drama Proven Innocent. Unlike most of the earliest characters in The Walking Dead, Merle Dixon did not first come from the comics and was instead an original creation of the show. Actor Michael Rooker had never struggled to secure work before, but things really started to take off after The Walking Dead. In fact, he may be even better known for his work in the MCU as Guardians of the Galaxy's Yondu than Merle. He's also since starred in films like The Belko Experiment and HBO's third season of True Detective. As The Walking Dead's first major antagonist, the governor brought a lot of shocking moments to the screen. Since he left The Walking Dead, David Morrissey has continued to impress on the small screen, starting with a regular role as Tobias Shepard on the second season of sci-fi series Extent. Interestingly enough, that allowed him to work with Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who would later become The Walking Dead's mega-villain, Negan. Before he joined the rest of the survivors as Tyrese Williams, Chad L. Coleman was already known for his performance as Dennis Cuddy Wise on HBO's The Wire. Since his time on Dead came to a heartbreaking end, Coleman has continued to amass impressive TV credits. In addition to enjoying recurring roles on several popular TV shows, Coleman joined the cast of The Expanse as Colonel Fred Johnson, who becomes known as the Butcher of Anderson Station for his ruthless attack on a group of insurgents. Coleman also appears as the alien Clyden on Fox's The Orville. Poor Bob. When the survivors sought refuge at Terminus, it was Bob who was made to pay for that mistake more than anyone else. He was forced to give a pound of flesh, several pounds actually, to satisfy the hunger of the crazy cannibals who had tricked the group, but he turned out to be tainted meat. In addition to a role on HBO's The Deuce, actor Lawrence Gilliard Jr., another Wire alum, also earned a recurring role in USA Network's final season of Graceland. If you don't get a chill thinking back on Gareth's behavior in The Walking Dead's fourth and fifth seasons, you might be as inhumane as he was. Since his character's brutal on-screen execution, Andrew J. West has made some interesting career moves. First, he continued in the vein of villainy as Damon on Freeform's short-lived horror series Dead of Summer. But then he showed everyone that he could totally play the good guy by becoming the adult version of Henry Mills in ABC's final season of Once Upon a Time. As divisive as Deanna was for some fans of The Walking Dead, she eventually wised up and ceded all her authority in Alexandria to Rick Grimes. So in the end, she definitely did not deserve what was coming to her in Season 6, and her death was pretty sad. Things have been going just swimmingly for Tova Feldsha in real life, though. The actress has since earned several recurring roles on new shows, including playing the President of the United States on CBS's Salvation and guest-starring as Rachel Bloom's overbearing mother on The CW's Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. After his beloved character Glenn was killed off in the premiere of Season 7, Stephen Yun made some big moves to capitalize on his small-screen fame. 
First, he appeared in a few movies, including Netflix's Okja, Sorry to Bother You, and the critically acclaimed Korean film Burning. His TV cred is only going to increase, too, as he stars in an episode of Jordan Peele's reboot of The Twilight Zone. And he's also set to perform in another property based on the comics of Robert Kirkman, the animated superhero series Invincible. Glenn might have run out of luck on the show, but his real-life counterpart is doing just fine. Like Glenn, Abraham and his epic mustache were both grossly mistreated by Negan's batting practice session at the beginning of Season 7. Actor Michael Cudlitz journeyed back to Alexandria to jump behind the lens and direct an episode for Season 9 and signed on to do so again for Season 10. The long-working actor has also had no trouble getting jobs that put him in front of the lens, including guest roles in House of Lies and Young Sheldon, and a regular role as the Cleary family patriarch in ABC's The Kids Are Alright. Jesse was eaten alive by walkers in season 6 while experiencing the anguish of watching her son get devoured right in front of her because The Walking Dead simply has no cap on cruelty. TV fans are most likely to recognize Alexandra Breckenridge from NBC's hit drama series This Is Us, which introduced her as Kevin Pearson's longtime love interest Sophie. She's also appeared on American Horror Story Coven and leads the cast of Netflix's drama series Virgin River. A few months before Sasha's final episode aired, the news dropped that Sonequa Martin-Green had landed the leading role of Michael Burnham in CBS's Star Trek Discovery, which made her exit from The Walking Dead seem inevitable. Martin-Green's career shows no signs of slowing, as Discovery has been renewed for a third season, and she's been tapped to star in the sequel to Space Jam. Last but not least, let's pour one out for poor Dwayne Jones. The kiddo only appeared in the very first episode of The Walking Dead, but his presence was pivotal to establishing the mood of the series. Since the show, actor Adrian Kelly Turner has continued to work steadily in films and TV, including appearing in the pilot for Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23 and in Bad Teacher with Cameron Diaz. Turner has grown up quite a bit since his days in The Walking Dead and even recently shared a photo of himself holding a little Dwayne doll for old time's sake. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.